What have you seen God doing this last week? Isaac annoying you is different than God annoying you. He may be using Isaac to teach you patience. Well, mine's a relatively new word. I'm still, I'm just starting to ponder this. A new I word. Was, I, a, a word that, you ever, God just takes a word in it and it just kind of glows and then every time you see that word I mean, it just pops out at you okay it's pretty simple word I found it today I came across it as I was doing a Bible study and um, the word is all hmm. and there were two songs this morning that had all in it and um, in Genesis, God told Abraham, or Abram at the time, in Genesis 12, and I paraphrased here, but it's, leave all that you know and follow me to a new place, and I will show you. And then this is a quote, because I wrote it down exactly. What were the benefits for Abram's obedience? I will make you a great nation. I will bless you, your name will be great, and in you all the families of the earth will be blessed. And then in Matthew 28, Jesus said to the disciples after he rose, before he was taken up in clouds, go teach all nations, baptize them in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, Teach them to observe all my commands, and I am with you always. Thanks. And then I, I was um, in Matthew 28, 18, Jesus said, all power is given to me in heaven and in earth. All power is given to him. Where Sometimes I, I think that the enemy has power here on earth because, which could be true, could be smoke and mirrors on his part now. Sure. Because when Jesus died and rose again, he won. He won it all. It's true. So all power is given to Jesus. All creation sings his praise you walk outside you look at any tiny you look at a flower and you look at the amazingness of it the intricacy of the tiny little flower that's there um where people don't even see it they step on it sure all creation praises god because he is almighty hmm. and so I want all of you to help me with the project. And this, uh, just this part came as I was pray just praying there at the end, because I thought, I need to study all. Oh, that's really going to be big. That's a lot. That's a lot. So what I thought would be an awesome thing, since we have, we've started, this is our board over here. <laughs> if I put a board up there that says all, and then when you find in scripture, as you're reading, if you find a scripture that says all, write it down, and we'll, we'll have an all wall. Ah, an all wall right over there. And just to see, because if God says all, he means all. He doesn't mean a little bit. He doesn't all. True. And when he says he wants all of us, he means all and all. He mean, oh. He's the all in all. Jason's got one up there already. Yep. He's the all in all. He means all. It's true. Not a tiny little bit. He wants it all. It's true. And I think that in, in you questioning God, asking him about the, the scripture, I don't understand why does it say this and why, why aren't I seeing it? I think that's what he wants of us. 
The problem's not with him. It's not with his word. Sure. It's with us. So when you find something there, okay, I'm willing, expl you know, expl Help explain me this to me. Yep. Let me, give me your understanding. You're going to need some big paper. I think so. I think there's probably a lot of alls yeah. in the scripture. There's, there are. There's a lot. And, and, and your, his people perish for lack of knowledge. Hmm. And not knowledge in the world, because knowledge of the world goes flinging around all the, over the place. It's true. But knowledge of his word. And I think that's, I think he's drawing you to his word, and that's what you're feeling, is he's drawing, he's drawing me to his word. Get in there and, and I want to see what, he, what he's saying, what I've... Amen. After all these years, there's, everything seems new again to me hmm. as I'm reading and... It's all new. <laughs> That's good. Yeah. That's true, and and that's that's actually on on the on the planning sheet right now, actually. So you're jumping in there. Well done. What else is God doing that we can see anyway? I don't know about C, but I, I feel like you're the perfect lead into what I've been thinking. One of the scripture, there are a number of scriptures that have almost in one way been like a thorn in my spirit through the years. You know, like you're accountable for every word you ever speak. We're accountable for how we spend our time, and it makes me uneasy because I haven't been as diligent as I would like to be. Sure. But one of the scriptures where Jesus said to the disciples, you know, these things that I'm doing, you'll do too and greater. Do we see it going on? I mean, I feel an ongoing conviction about that. But I have felt in my spirit since I first came to Catalyst that God wants this church to truly be a Catalyst and to be a place where his Holy Spirit can show himself forth in power with us leading to his lead his leading and it's following his leading is what I was trying to say you know that we'll be bold and that we'll see miracles here and we'll see the word brought forth and we'll see the gifts of the spirit in operation and we'll see generosity flowing and people being blessed because of it so that they have more to give and I know from the years I've said <laughs> David and I traveled a lot because he liked to move from one job to another and we always changed states. He didn't just change jobs in the town. So I have been in quite a few churches and I used to have a job where I spent every week in a different city and I always went to church when I was wherever I was. So I have seen a lot. Moving in the gifts, seeing miracles happen, seeing people recover from sicknesses is much easier when there's an environment for it. There are some places you can know God wants to do it, but it's there's almost an oppression or a lack of expectancy or whatever. Sure. And I really feel like the word from God for us today is stir up expectation. That's where we need to start. I mean, these things come by faith, but faith comes by hearing the word, and it comes from hope. Faith is the substance of things hoped for. If we don't hope, we're not going to have faith because we've got nothing to be having sure. faith for. And hope comes from having expectation and wanting to see these things. Amen. So I, I want to encourage everybody here to consciously stir up expectation that the Holy Spirit's going to work here. And I know I went to a church in Illinois they started in January, whatever year, well, let's see, it was 1978, not that it matters. A little while but, ago. Yeah, it was a little while ago, but seven people, the five pastors and two other people. And by the time I went to that church in February, they had over 300 people, and by the end of the year, they had over 700. No, numbers don't matter. I'm just saying that they were drawn because God's spirit was moving. They didn't go out and advertise. They were meeting in a, um, in a Holiday Inn. <laughs> the room happened to be where the drunks went by from the bar to the bathroom. You wouldn't believe how many people stumbled their way in, 
got saved, got delivered, got yeah. kept from suicide, I mean, all kinds of things. Happened That's to good. hear an invitation for healing and came in and got healed, whatever. But the word just spread and, and the spirit was drawing people. It wasn't, it was what God was doing. It wasn't what people were doing. But when it started, there was such an expectation that God was going to move, God was going to do things. And it was incredible to watch. It is. It is. One of the, um, Teresa's called me a bubble popper for a long time, right? And some of you have, some of you have, have experienced that bubble popping, right? It's like, hey, this would be cool if we could do this and, poof, and blow it up. But one of the things that bubble popping does is it, it blows hope out the window. And I've realized that, and it's like, oh, man, a lie. To give hope is so much more fun than to blow apart people's dreams. Right? To give life to something, not, not from a fake standpoint of like, oh, yeah, you can, you can go be an astronaut, you know, to someone that clearly can't be. I, I do still have a problem with the phrase, you can be anything you want to be. I, I still have a problem with that one because that's not true. But you can become who God has created you to be. That's absolutely true. And it has been exciting to help people start living into that. Helping them mature into who God wants them to become. We're going to be looking at Daniel 7 today. We've been talking, we've, we've shared the last few weeks on judgment and how that all transpires so that, you know, when, when things of this earth are done, what it looks like of judgment getting to heaven and judgment and I guess the, the other side of that is if, if you're judged that you're not going to heaven, you're going to hell, all those fun things, right? It's not, it's not all that hope giving in that case. But what about, what do we see when it comes to the people who are here? when judgment happens. What's that all look like? And this, Daniel 7 gives us a, a picture of that. In the first year of Belshazzar, the king of Babylon, Daniel had a dream, and visions passed through his mind as he was lying on his bed. He wrote down the substance of his dream. Daniel said, In my vision at night I looked, and there before me were four winds of heaven, churning up a great sea. Four great beasts, each different from the others, came out of the sea. The first was like a lion, had wings of an eagle. I watched until its wings were torn off, and it was lifted from the ground so that it stood on two feet like a man. And the heart of a man was given to it. And there before me was a second beast, and it looked like a bear. It was raised up on, its, on one of its sides, and it had three ribs in its mouth between its teeth. It was told, get up, eat your fill of flesh. After that, I looked, and there before me was another beast, one that looked like a leopard, and on its back it had four wings like those of a bird. This beast had four heads, and it was given authority to rule. After that, in my vision at night, I looked, and there before me was a fourth beast, terrifying and frightening, and very powerful. It had large iron teeth. It crushed and devoured its victims and trampled underfoot whatever was left. It was different from the former beast, and it had ten horns. While I was thinking about the horns, there before me was another horn, a little one, which came up among them, and three of the first horns were uprooted by it. This horn had eyes like the eyes of a man and the mouth that spoke boastfully. As I looked, thrones were set in place, and the Ancient of Days took his seat. His clothing was as white as snow. The hair of his head was, at light, was white like wool. His throne was flaming with fire, and its wheels were all ablaze. A river of fire was flowing, coming out from before him. Thousands upon thousands 
attended him. Ten thousands times ten thousand stood before him. The court was seated. The books were opened. Then I continued to watch because of the boastful words the horn was speaking. I kept looking until the beast was slain and its body was destroyed and thrown into the blazing fire. The other beast had been stripped of their authority but were all allowed to live for a period of time. In my vision at night, I looked, and there before me was one like the Son of Man coming with the clouds of heaven. He approached the Ancient of Days and was led into his presence. He was given authority and glory and sovereign power. All peoples, nations, and men of every language worshipped him. His dominion is an everlasting dominion that will not pass away. And his kingdom is one that will never be destroyed. I hope, for your sake, you did not have this vision last night. If you had, what do you suppose your reaction would be? You'd be scared? Okay. (laughs) <laughs> I I am not telling anyone about this. Okay? Surprised. surprised? That's fair. Anxious, Anxious? okay? Okay. We just talked about that last week. You know, as a as a watchman, as ambassadors, we have a calling to share with others warnings that, that we're aware of, that they may have an opportunity to repent. That's very true. This vision that Daniel has is troubling. Let's read on for a moment. I, Daniel, this is verse 15, I, Daniel, was troubled in my spirit. And the visions that passed through my mind disturbed me. I, I approached one of those standing there and asked him the true meaning of all this. So he told me and gave me the interpretation of these things. The four great beasts are the four kingdoms that will rise from the earth. But the saints of the Most High will receive the kingdom and will possess it forever. Yes, forever and ever. Boom. He just answered it, right? Took care of it all. For those of us who like short, concise, here you go type statements, that's fantastic. Daniel wanted to know what this was all about, and in two short phrases, he's told, here's what this whole dream is about. Have you ever had any of your dreams that you were able to tell someone in that short of a short of a, a phrasing, that short of a, a, a statement of what all happened in your dream? If, if we had read those two verses, would it have explained the previous 14? It does. It does explain it. It does share what's going on and what happens, right? But it does leave a lot that many of us will begin to say, but what about, and what about, and what about, and we, we want to know more, don't we? There's more details here that we're still uncertain of, that we still don't know what's going on, right? He's troubled. Daniel's troubled. He wants help understanding what's going on, so he asks, and this is the very, very brief answer that he's given. Have you ever faced a situation, not a vision, but a situation where you've wanted to know, God, what is going on here? And he says, I know what I'm doing. Trust me. It's going to be great. Have you ever faced that situation and had some, yeah, buts? To go with it? 
that like you God's finalized the conversation and you have some some yeah buts that you, you want to discuss with God. You want details, right? You want to know what's going on. Daniel in this to deal with his vision, he's he's wrestling with some things and he wants some more details. He's still wrestling through what's going on in this vision, what he needs to do with it, how it needs to be handled, what's all going on. And we all face this, right? We all face these moments, whether they be from vision or from circumstances. We have these times when we don't have all the answers we want, and the circumstances or the the things that are before us are causing us trouble. And we want to have a better explanation. Daniel's facing this, and he, he gets the opportunity then to continue on. He says, Then I wanted to know, what's the true meaning of the fourth beast, which was different from all the others and the most terrifying? With its iron teeth and bronze claws, the beast that had crushed and devoured its victims and trampled underfoot whatever was left. I also wanted to know, what about the ten horns with its head, and what about the other horn that came up before the three of them? Which three of them fell? The horn that looked more imposing than the others, and that had eyes and a mouth that spoke both boastfully. As I watched, this horn was waging war against the saints and defeating them until the Ancient of Days came and pronounced judgment in favor of the saints of the Most High. And the time came when they possessed the kingdom. He gave me this explanation. The four... The fourth beast is the fourth kingdom that will appear on earth. It will be different from all other kingdoms, and it will devour the whole earth, trampling it down and crushing it. The ten horns are ten kings who will come from this kingdom. And after them, another king will arise, different from the earlier ones. He will subdue three kings. He will speak against the Most High and oppress his saints and will try to change the set times and laws. The saints will be handed over to him for a time, times, and half a time. But a court will sit, and his power will be taken away and completely destroyed forever. Then the sovereignty and power and greatness of the kingdoms under the whole earth will be handed to the saints. The power of the Most High, I'm sorry, the people of the Most High. His kingdom will be an everlasting kingdom, and all rulers will worship and obey him. This is the end of the matter. I, Daniel, was deeply troubled, troubled by my thoughts, and my face turned pale, but I kept the matter to myself. There's a lot of pieces in there that I think are troubling to us. It gets very troubling as we've seen people throughout history try to place who these kings and kingdoms are, right? If you were unaware, yesterday was supposed to end the world. Some guy had figured it out that all things had aligned and the world was supposed to end yesterday. From a numbers standpoint, it was the perfect day for the world to end. Did you know that? It was funny, as I was reading about this, someone wanted to interview him and he said he is unavailable and he could meet them this coming Wednesday. I found that a bit humorous. I'm like, okay, well then. I don't know. But people have been trying to place these situations for a long time. People, when World War II was going on, there were lots of people that were trying to sync up who the kingdoms are, and putting names to, to these, these mysterious places and, and people. They wanted to, to share, here's what it is. And when you have a lot of power, think, think of the most powerful time that you've had in your life. The, most, the, time, the circumstance in which you, you had a lot of chips. 
you had a lot that you could cash in and get things to go your way, right? You got the time? You got your moment? How much do you want to change? You've got the power and the capacity to make a lot of things go the way you want them to go. What is it that you want to change? What is it that needs to be different? And how much capacity do you have to do it? Often it seems daunting, right? There have been kingdoms throughout history, though, that they've been able to make a lot of change happen. A lot of change happen. We're told in this passage that the kingdoms in this, in this case are so powerful that they want to change the designated times and events. Now, that means nothing if it's just similar, like strange, hang on, Jason, similar or you know, strange, weird types of obscure type things. But when you're talking about changing the end of time when God says, I'm sending my son, it's time to go, boy, you know, get in there, do your thing. I, I'm not quite sure that God's going to be so, like, eh, you know. But when, that's, when that time comes, I don't know that there's a thing that anyone's going to be able to do about it. I, I, I think as much as anyone would want to. When you're in power, what, what is it that you're most after keeping? Power. And when someone threatens to disrupt that power, what do you do? You fight for it. Yeah, a fight ensues. And that may be physically, that may be emotionally, intellectually, uh, but no matter how it comes down, a fight happens. And when, when fights happen, what, what goes down with that? What comes with fights? A winner and a loser. Pain. Indeed. There's a lot that goes into this. We're told that authority is given. Authority is given and the saints are oppressed. Right? They experience turmoil. And that's really frustrating for, for many of us to see. It's frustrating for me to see. Like, how is it? How is it that, for whatever reason, the authority is given that they are oppressed? That we are oppressed? I mean, we're one and the same with this group of people. Whether we get to be them or not, I don't know. But that's kind of crazy, isn't it? What is up with this? And yet God says to Daniel... It's spelled out for him that they'll be given a kingdom, an everlasting kingdom. And it's amazing how when we can know an end and yet see the path by which the end is accomplished, how frustrating that can be. Because many of us, I, I believe, would rather opt for can't we just skip this oppression season and just jump to the everlasting one? Right? We want that. We, I want that both in this circumstance and the, the, the things that our family is dealing with, with health. I, I would rather not have to deal with the turmoil. And it's frustrating for me when I can see that, God, you have the power. You've got everything it takes, and you could make all of this different. Why do I know that? Because you created things by speaking them into existence. You've brought all sorts of things about that we've been witness to. And I know that you've got the capacity to change what we're dealing with. Now, why you don't, I don't understand. I'm not, I, I, I don't have those answers right now. But I know he's got the capacity. So when we're looking at something like this, 
And we see that for a time, times, and half a time, and there's loads of people that want to dig into that and make that a, a, a big debate type thing of what that all looks like and whatnot. I'm not, I, I, I'm not here for that. But what we do see is God gives a season that the saints are oppressed and that for whatever reason, this authority is given the power to rule and oppress God's people. Now, what have we seen through Scripture about people who oppress God's people? <sighs> They're going to get it, and they get it badly. If you can ever help, and I know that and we see in Scripture as well that, uh, you know, Abram is even told, your people are going to be enslaved for 400 years, but woe to the nation that has them serve them as slaves. It's crazy. And we're facing, we're facing loads and loads of oppression in our world today. We've never seen a higher amount of slavery, human slavery in our world than what we have today. It's never happened. Unprecedented at this point in time. Our communities are faced with opiate addictions, We've got loads of people addicted to gambling, alcohol, sex. Loads and loads and loads of oppression is going on in our community. Now, is that the same as what's going on here? I don't, I don't think it's quite the same. But the fact remains that God can change it all by speaking. And yet he doesn't. He does. He does want us to have faith. And that's what it takes to get through this. Yes. It, it does require trust. And that's where all this comes down to asking ourselves the question, do you believe God for what he says in the end? And are you willing to walk the path that he invites you to walk in order to get there. Do you believe, do you trust him enough to say, Lord, I will walk the path that you have for me today. I will walk the path that, I will take the next step that you have for me. Not even the whole path for today. I'll walk the next step that you have for me today in order to go where you want me to go to get where you want me to get that I may be who you want me to be. Do you believe him enough for that? Now, I'm not kidding. I think, that, I think that those stories, those ideas, those perceptions that we have of what's coming in the future may be as daunting as what Daniel sees in this vision. Not necessarily on the same scale, but the fact that, you know, there again, if it's yours, that whole thing of what's really close in proximity to you, what you're dealing with is going to be a very big deal because it's what's in front of you. And it's okay, I think. It's fair to be troubled. And it takes discernment to know, who do I share this with? Who can I trust in order to help me through this? How can I help others help me in this? What do we do with any of this stuff? But to know and to trust that God has an everlasting kingdom that he's inviting us into. That regardless of circumstance on this earth, as we follow Jesus and as we have faith in him and on him, that the everlasting kingdom is where we end up. And for some who are here when that judgment happens, I don't know if you saw it or not in this passage, but... It seems as though in Daniel's vision, he's talking about all this stuff, and it's right after the, the horn that has eyes of a man and a mouth that speaks boastfully. As that's going on, it's a, a little like, it seems to be a sidebar event is happening, right? Except it's not a sidebar event. It's like the main event. If you can Imagine, if you will, a football game that's going on currently, and for some other reason, 
the halftime show gets to just start setting up right in the middle of the football game. I mean, that would get your attention, right? That's what we're seeing in this case. Thrones were set in place. The Ancient of Days took his seat. His clothing was as white as snow. The hair on his head was as white as wool. His throne was flaming with fire, and, with, and its wheels were all ablaze. A river of fire was flowing, coming out from him. And thousands upon thousands attended him. Ten thousand times, ten thousand stood before him. A court was seated, and the books were open. Some of us don't like courts very much. For one reason or another, maybe you've been on the, the bad side of judgment. Uh, maybe you've gotten to serve jury duty or whatever. Uh, but the courts are not always fun. But this is a court we may look forward to. It's the seating of what happens for judgment. That God says he, he finally pronounces judgment in favor of the saints. And takes us from what is currently happening to what will be happening, which is the saints ruling with him in an everlasting kingdom. I believe we know that everlasting kingdom is heaven. That we will be with him for the rest of eternity. Indeed. So as we wrestle with life today, as we wrestle with... with um, What's going on for tomorrow? What's going on in the future? May we wrestle with God. May we ask him to help us understand how to take our next step with him. Knowing that it may have trouble. Knowing that our days may require a fight. But may we fight well. That we may go and be who he wants us to be. And get to where he wants us to go. Let's pray. Lord, we thank you that you are drawing us to an everlasting kingdom. That as we believe in you, in your son, that you see us for, for him. And Lord, as we face the troubles of this day, may we, may we remember that, they, that each day has enough trouble of its own. And that in that, we may seek you and seek you first. Lord, help us to have that as a priority. And when we fail, help us to get up again. Lord, we love you and we thank you for your love for us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Go forth to love and serve the Lord. Have a great week and continue to seek him for what your next step with him is. Enjoy. I love you too, brother. I appreciate it.